4,000 years ago, the people of Israel set out on a difficult journey from slavery to freedom. As they prepared to enter their new home, God gave them a formula. For the Lord, bring thee into a good land, a land of wheat and barley and grapevines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and dates, honey. Today, thousands of years later, modern science embraces this ancient wisdom. A leading team of scientists in Israel determines that the extract of seven plants, originally known as the seven species, is the perfect formula for energy, good health, wellness, and quality of life. The extracts of each of these foods have been combined into a powerful liquid nutritional supplement, a unique blend of holy land goodness and scientific enhancement. One of them, like the grapes, have got an antioxidant, which is resveratrol. The pomegranate have got another antioxidant, which is called allergic acid, and so forth. And if you take all of them together and provide, give it to a person, the healing effect is fantastic. In many ways, this is the land of Israel in a bottle. The Holy Herbs Liquid Nutritional Supplement with 20 daily one teaspoon servings can be yours for $50. Invest in your health today by calling the number on the screen or visiting the ministry website. In addition, the organic seven species cosmetic kit brings nature's cleansing and revitalizing properties directly onto your skin. If you also consume these supplements, the two together will have an additive effect compared to this one alone or this one alone with regard to the skin. So you need to be working from the inside and the outside. Exactly. The Organic 7 Species Cosmetic Kit is now available for $120. Used along with a liquid nutritional supplement, you'll look better and feel better. Holy herbs from the Holy Land, ancient wisdom, meeting modern science to dramatically improve your health. Call or order online today. The Dake Study Bible is recognized as the most comprehensive and important examination of the scriptures ever created. If you love the Word of God, make sure to get this amazing Bible. Containing more resources for personal study than any other Bible, this ultimate tool for understanding God's Word can be yours today for only $125. Invest in your Christian life by getting the best Bible on earth. And every preacher I know has the Dig Bible because they know the value of it. Don't miss this opportunity to get your own copy of the Dig Study Bible or give it as a gift to a loved one or friend. Call or order online now. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, Jesus said, and then the end will come. The people in the studio are charged up with one thing. We believe that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer to humanity and the troubles on this earth. The gospel, the gospel, and only the gospel is the solution. And the people of God said a mighty amen. A mighty amen. A mighty amen. All right, now, I'm talking to you as my partners, as my friends around the world, and you here in this studio. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the heart of heaven. You and I are called for one purpose as believers. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. Think about that. You that are watching in your homes, you that are in this studio, think about this one amazing truth. As the Father has sent me, so God so loved the world that he sent his Son. That's what we read in Scripture. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, will not perish. It's not the will of God for any to perish. That's what the Bible says. I'm talking to every 
Christian that is listening to me and every non-Christian that's listening to me. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God. Without the gospel, there is no power. Power to change lives. Power to bring healing to the sick. Power to be delivered from demonic powers and bondages. That power is released when the gospel is preached. And that power is released in our lives when we support the gospel. Because the scripture says the gospel is the power of God. In other words, God will not reveal or declare or release his power without the gospel of his son. What is the gospel? Clearly, that Jesus Christ came to this earth in flesh. He became a man like you and I. Lived a sinless life. Showed that he is the son of God. He said to the Jews, if you do not believe who I am, believe for the work's sake. Let the miracles prove who I am. For who else came and raised the dead? Who else came and cleansed lepers? Who else spoke to the storm and said, peace, be still? Only one. His name is Jesus. And the Son of God took our sin, our pain, our misery, our bondage, our darkness on the cross. Nailed our sin. And the Bible tells us he became our sin. He who knew no sin became our sin. That we might be made his righteousness. And that by itself is an amazing miracle. And Jesus Christ rose from the dead to prove he is the son of almighty God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this simple message must be declared to the ends of the earth. And the Bible says we, as God's people, have been given the privilege. Think about this. No angel has that amazing honor except the believer. And you think about something with me. It cost God nothing to create the world. It cost him nothing to create man. It cost him nothing to create the stars, the sun, the moon, and on and on, all the galaxies. It cost him nothing. And I believe when God created the heavens and the earth, he did it with laughter and joy. So think about that. It cost him nothing to create the world, the universe, the, this whole earth and its fullness and beauty, creating man, nothing. It cost him everything to save one life. The most precious thing in the sight of God is a human life. More precious than heaven, more precious than all the angels put together is one soul. And God's only aim is to save the lost. And he placed this burden on us, the church. And every man and every woman with that burden will know the anointing of God. Because God's anointing is not given for picnics. It's given for service. Jesus said he shall receive power to be what? Witnesses unto me. The power of God is not for someone playing with it. The, the power of God is for winning the lost, the lost, saving the lost. Now, God Almighty has called me to preach the gospel. I have a, a mandate on my life. Not only is it because of what I know the Bible says, but because of what God said to me when I was a young man. I was 20 years old when I had a vision. As clear to me as I see you people sitting here. I saw an angel of the Lord. Had a big, mighty chain in his hand. The chain connected to a massive door that filled, it seemed, the whole heaven. He swung it open. And I saw... Men and women as far as the eyes could see. And then he said, come with me. And now I'm standing on top of the crowd looking down. And I see this massive crowd walking towards a valley. As I looked, 
I saw liquid fire shooting up with men and women falling into that valley. Now, the crowd that was in the back or the center could not see it, except those that were close enough to see it. And they were trying to fight from falling in. But the crowd behind them going towards it, all marching towards that great valley, pushed the people down into it. And it seemed to be as millions were falling in, not thousands. Then I saw a horrible sight. I'll never forget that. I saw the faces of men and, and women coming up through that liquid lake of fire and down, gnashing their teeth with such fear and pain. And I heard the voice of the Lord preach the gospel. If you do not, everyone who falls in is your responsibility. That was on a Saturday night. Sunday, I'm in church. I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if this was you last night, have the pastor say the same thing that I heard in that vision. I get to church. There's a guest speaker there that Sunday. And the guest speaker could not even preach. He said, I have to say something. He points in my face. I'm sitting in halfway on the, on the right of the, of the platform. He said, there's somebody there that needs to hear these words. And out of his mouth came the exact words. If you do not preach, you are responsible for everyone that falls in. I knew that I knew that I knew God had spoken to me. It wasn't long after I had another vision in my, in my bedroom. I know some people don't really understand this, but it's real. I saw a person, as real as I see you, I could not tell if it was man or woman because they were wrapped in fire, in flames. His or her feet did not touch the floor in my, in my room. They were about maybe a foot higher. And I'll never forget till the day I die the noise they were making. They were, you know how Jesus said they will gnash their teeth. I could hear it. I began screaming, no, 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 no. And to my amazement, and our house was small in those days, nobody heard me outside. As though God sealed my bedroom. I was, I was screaming, no, no, no. And I don't know why I said it. All I know is I said it. And again the voice said, preach the gospel. I do not want to stand before God on that glorious day and hear him tell me that I failed. I am not going to fail. It's my privilege. It's my duty. Woe is me, like Paul said, if I preach not the gospel. So, you as partners, you as partners and friends, I'm talking to you tonight about the most important thing I can talk to you about. I'm talking about souls, men and women around the world who have not heard the gospel. It's our duty, our privilege, our responsibility to tell them who else will. Nobody will. It is our duty and our privilege to preach the gospel. But the Bible says, how shall they go unless they be sent? How can we preach the gospel without support? The gospel is free, but the means to deliver the gospel is expensive. We have to tell them, men and women out there, someone told you. You're sitting here tonight, and you in your homes, rejoicing by the fact you're saved and born again, that Jesus Christ saved your soul, that Jesus is more real to you than life. But think about the many millions, hundreds of millions, in the billions, in fact, that have not heard, that need to hear the gospel. One man cannot do it. All of us must do it. And our time is running short. You see what's going on with Israel the entire, the entire Middle East is about to explode. Iran, Syria, 
what's going on in Egypt, on, on and on. All are signs pointing to the coming of the Lord. But the Bible tells us that the preaching of the gospel is the greatest sign. It says, this gospel shall be preached, and then, and only then, the end will come. Now, the minute you focus on the gospel, God focuses on you. The minute you place your eyes on the gospel, God puts his eyes on you. You can give for church buildings. You can give for projects. It doesn't touch God's heart. But when your heart is for the gospel, you've just touched his heart. The minute you make a decision to support the gospel, the minute you say, Lord, I will spend the rest of my life seeing men and women come to the cross. My aim in life is to see the lost saved. My aim in life is to see men and women Receive the truth of the gospel. When you make that decision, God Almighty will back up everything you do in life. God will bless everything you do in life. God will bless the work of your hands the minute you make that decision. It's not about anything else. It's not about, well, Lord, I'll help Benny Hinn. Forget Benny Hinn. Or I'll have this preacher. Or I'll do this for that man. Forget it. What God is looking for is what will you do for my gospel? Is your heart burning with the preaching of my gospel? Now you think about this with me for a minute. 96% of all preachers are preaching to 4% of the world's population. 96% of all preachers are in America. 96% of all preachers are preaching to only 4% of the world's population right here. While the whole world is crying out, very few are telling them, well, I am not going to fail God. Neither will you. Let me hear a big amen. amen. I'm not interested to preach to the choir. They've heard the gospel more than once. Go ye into all the world, Jesus said, and preach the gospel. There are nations out there waiting to hear the gospel. Men and women waiting to hear the gospel. It's not about giving and receiving. It's about giving for the gospel's sake. It's about giving to see the gospel of Jesus Christ preached to the nations of the world. The Bible tells us, that prosperity is God's blessed will for us. And the Bible says God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. I want every one of you right now to lift your hands and pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Not only does God delight. Keep praying, saints. Keep praying. Keep, keep praying. Not only does God delight in prospering you, He wants you to ask for it. I'm going to ask you to do something right now. I'm going to ask you to ask God to prosper you. Just ask Him to bless your life. He promised to bless you. He said, I will bless you and I'll make you a blessing. So not only do we ask for it, we have to sow for it. You see, there's three keys here in Scripture. The Bible says if you'll focus on God's purpose. Now, number one, love the Lord with all your heart. That's the, that's the first key. Keep praying, saints. Mighty things are happening already here. The first key is focus on God's purpose. Seek ye first the kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be added to your life. The second thing God says is pray. Ask him to bless your life. Psalm 118, verse 25, David said, send prosperity now. You and I have the legal right to ask God to prosper our life. But then we have to sow seed. We have to believe God by obedience. Obedience is what triggers the harvest. Obedience is what releases the harvest. 
When we obey the Lord, He will move on our behalf. When we say, yes, Lord, I will do what you say, then God Almighty begins to respond and begins to bless our life and begins to prosper us. And so the Word of God says, honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your bonds be filled with plenty and your presses will burst out with new wine. I'm going to ask the ushers right now to pass envelopes to everybody in this, in this studio here. And I'm going to ask you in your home to go to that phone. Go to your phone. Call the number on the screen. I am asking God to release an anointing for prosperity in your life today because we're focusing on the gospel. We are sowing seed tonight for the gospel of Jesus Christ, His Son. I'm going to ask you tonight to sow a $1,000 seed. I'm going to ask others to sow $500 seeds. I'm going to ask some to sow a $100 dollar seeds. But first, I'm going to ask you to ask the Lord right now to prosper you. Remember what Jesus said, we seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added. Secondly, we ask him to prosper us. And thirdly, we sow for it. Proverbs 3 says, honor the Lord with your substance. So I'm going to ask many of you right now to get to the phone and sow $1,000 for the gospel to be preached around the world. Because, yes, it's free. The gospel is free. But the means to deliver the gospel is very expensive. To get the gospel to Africa, to get the gospel to India, to get the gospel to Europe and Asia, very expensive. But souls must be one. So right now, I'm, I'm asking you in your homes to get to the phone. I'm asking some of you right here to give that same amount. If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I want to lay hands on your envelope as you bring it forward. I'm going to ask the Lord to do something miraculous tonight, to release a harvest in the next 90 days. I believe God Almighty will do it in your life. He has done it many times before. He'll do it again. God Almighty is speaking to you right now to sow that seed. Now, precious people, I do not want you passing offering buckets. I want the people to bring their seed to me and put it in my hand because the, the anointing of God is on me right now. If you put it in that, in that bucket, you're going to lose it. But if you put it in, in my hand, you're going to gain something from heaven tonight. Everybody lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I want many of you to start walking forward. If you're giving 1,000, 500, or 100, start coming down. Right now, come on. I want to lay my hand on your envelope. I want to lay my hand on your envelope. I want to ask God to prosper you tonight. You in your homes, keep calling that number on the screen and do the same thing. And I will lay my hand on your name when you call it in. Right now, call that number on the screen. I'm believing God for a release of a harvest tonight on you. I'm believing God to bless your life, bless your future, bless your home with prosperity, divine prosperity. People of God, can we lift our hands and pray in the Spirit right now? Come on, everyone, lift your voices and pray in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, I give you praise for the anointing. Jesus, Jesus, I give you praise for the anointing. Get to that, get to your phone. Call in your seed right now, whether a thousand, five hundred, or a hundred. Do it now. God is speaking to you. I'm asking for those amounts because I want to see your faith released tonight. When you sow larger amounts, you release faith. And when faith is released, God Almighty will release the harvest. That's just the way it works, people. That's the way it works. While the people here in this audience are coming down, you go ahead and call that number on the screen. Do it now. Believe God for a supernatural harvest right now. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, I give you praise. As you've heard Jesus, Pastor Benny share praise. about his Jesus, passion for reaching the lost, your heart has no doubt been stirred to do your part in helping him fulfill the mandate that is on us all, to go into all the world and preach the gospel. You may not be able to go yourself, 
but you can send Pastor Benny to nations where millions will not hear about Jesus unless the financial resources are available to take this message to them through crusades and television. Please go to your phone now and give your gift of $1,500, $100, or another amount, even as Pastor Benny prays for God to bless your obedience. Lord my God, I release the anointing right now. I release the anointing you promised us in Deuteronomy 8.18. You said you'll give us power to get well, to establish the gospel, to establish our covenant. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray everyone that has picked up the phone, everyone that is picking up the phone now, everyone that's calling now and will keep calling before we say goodbye, Lord. I pray that your mighty power will come upon them. Release your power in Jesus' mighty name. That from now on, everything they touch will prosper. I pray that you'll restore everything the enemy has stolen from them. Oh, people agree with me. Lord, I pray that you'll restore the years the locusts have eaten. In Jesus' mighty name. Dear God, the anointing is here. Lord, you said in your word, I will restore unto you the years the locusts have eaten. Lord, I thank you that the anointing that's in this house today is going to break every bondage. Release in Jesus' name that man and woman from bondage. In the name of Jesus Christ, God's only Son. Be free from your bondage. Be free from that bondage in your life. Be free from that financial burden of bondage. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Lord, I lay my hands on every seed right now and I release the anointing. People of God, I'm telling you, there's a mighty anointing here. Lift your hands and lift your voices and bless Him, bless Him, bless Him. Bless Him out loud. Bless Him in the Holy Ghost. Bless Him, bless Him, bless Him. Lord, we release this anointing in Jesus' mighty name. And from now on, everything they touch will prosper. Everything lost will come back. Restore double, 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 double. In Jesus' name. Now lift your hands and say double blessings. Double anointing. Double prosperity. Double power. In Jesus' mighty name. We claim it. We receive it. In Jesus' name. Job received double. Job received double. In Joel 2.23, it says, I will restore to you the years the locust hath eaten. I'm telling you, we're coming into that season. Lift your hands and thank God it's all coming back. Double is coming back. Double is being restored. Everything gone is coming back double. Double peace. Double health. Double strength, double joy, double prosperity, double miracles, double abundance. In Jesus' awesome and mighty name, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached, and then the end will come. Jesus said, go ye into all the world, preach the gospel. How many tonight will make a vow before God that for the rest of your life you'll focus on one thing, the gospel. Put your hands up high. In your home, come on, lift your hands because God can see it. God can see that hand. Now say, Father. Father. Out loud, say, Father. Father. From now on, From now on it, will the it will be the gospel. My heart will be focused on the gospel. My, heart will be focused on the gospel. My life on the gospel. My strength on the gospel. Everything I do for the gospel. From now on, Lord, everything I give is for the gospel. Everything I do for the gospel. In Jesus' name, make my life a mighty life that will glorify you. That I will live for one reason. One purpose, One purpose, the preaching of the gospel. The of the gospel. That, Jesus, your son, that Jesus, your son, 
will be glorified through my life, in my life, forever. Holy Spirit, anoint me. Lift both hands, say, Holy Spirit, anoint me afresh right now. Make me a witness in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, I make my life available. My future is yours. All my days are yours. Everything I have is yours. Anoint me now. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing it. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place as we say goodbye. Come on, lift your hands. That's blessing. Everywhere, everywhere, everybody. Come on, lift your voices. Holy Spirit. Remember, your call and gift of $1,500 or $100 for the gospel will produce tangible results as men, women, and children around the world will hear about Jesus and have their eternal futures secured because of your generosity. If the lines are busy, keep calling even after this program ends. Operators will be standing by to receive your gift and send your name to Pastor Benny so that he may pray for you just as he did for those in the studio. If you prefer, you can give online at www.bennyhin.org. Call now and remember that our Heavenly Father will take note of your obedience and reward you according to His covenant promises. Thank you and God bless you for your sacrificial investment into the gospel of Jesus Christ. Four thousand years ago, the people of Israel set out on a difficult journey from slavery to freedom. As they prepared to enter their new home, God gave them a formula. For the Lord, bring thee into a good land, a land of wheat and barley and grapevines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and dates honey. Today, thousands of years later, modern science embraces this ancient wisdom. A leading team of scientists in Israel determines that the extract of seven plants, originally known as the seven species, is the perfect formula for energy, good health, wellness, and quality of life. The extracts of each of these foods have been combined into a powerful liquid nutritional supplement, a unique blend of holy land goodness and scientific enhancement. One of them, like the grapes, have got an antioxidant, which is resveratrol. The pomegranate have got another antioxidant, which is called allergic acid, and so forth. And if you take all of them together and provide, give it to a person, the healing effect is fantastic. In many ways, this is the land of Israel in a bottle. The Holy Herbs Liquid Nutritional Supplement with 20 daily one teaspoon servings can be yours for $50. Invest in your health today by calling the number on the screen or visiting the ministry website. In addition, the organic seven species cosmetic kit brings nature's cleansing and revitalizing properties directly onto your skin. If you also consume these supplements, the two together will have an additive effect compared to this one alone or this one alone with regard to the skin. So you need to be working from the inside and the outside. Exactly. The Organic Seven Species Cosmetic Kit is now available for $120. Used along with a liquid nutritional supplement, you'll look better and feel better. Holy herbs from the Holy Land, ancient wisdom, meeting modern science to dramatically improve your health. Call or order online today. The Dake Study Bible is recognized as the most comprehensive and important examination of the scriptures ever created. If you love the Word of God, make sure to get this amazing Bible. Containing more resources for personal study than any other Bible, this ultimate tool for understanding God's Word can be yours today for only $125. Invest in your Christian life. 
by getting the best Bible on earth. And every preacher I know has the Dig Bible because they know the value of it. Don't miss this opportunity to get your own copy of the Dig Study Bible or give it as a gift to a loved one or friend. Call or order online now. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. Mike Smalley, president of World Reach Ministries in Rockwall, Texas, is one of America's most dynamic and sought after speakers. He has conducted thousands of services and business seminars in more than 40 nations, challenging audiences to reach for and apply the wisdom of God. And he has a special word for you today. I am so glad Mike Smalley is here. Are you doctor or pastor or doctor evangelist? <laughs> Mike, doctor whatever. Evangelist. Listen, listen. <laughs> He is really class. This gentleman is just anointed. The last time you came here, I still remember, I was kind of stunned by your presentation. You know, God's people want to prosper. Yes, they do. And very few of you on earth know how to stir our faith. Yeah. You know, uh, the one area the devil attacks is this one. It's, it's because he's scared of it. Right. Very much so. And I want you to talk to us because I really believe the Lord has sent you here to give that blessed word because I know everything in my heart knows that God is about to bless his people. Yes, absolutely. It's so key, isn't it, just to, to fulfill the Great Commission, to care for our family. We have to have the provision of God to spread talk the to message they're, of they're God. right there, please. I'm so excited today to be here with Pastor Benny, and I know it's no accident that you're listening to me right now. I want you to grab yeah. a pen and get a piece of paper. I really believe if the Lord delays His coming, today is going to be a day you look back on in the weeks and months to come, and you say that was a turning point day wow. when the Holy Spirit brought a word into my heart. You know, when God speaks, it changes us. It's impossible for God to talk to us and our spirit not to be changed. Absolutely. And as you're sitting there at your home, or maybe you're watching on a road trip in a motel, maybe you're in the hospital, maybe you're watching over the Internet. I, I don't know how the Holy Spirit's made it possible for you and I and Pastor Benny to have these moments, but here's what I know. I know God loves you, Amen. and He has sent us here today to share a word to you. Amen. God has put His word in our mouth to share with you today. You know, there's a lot of people that you can talk to every day, and there's social media now, there's Twitter, there's Facebook, there's all these different things that didn't exist 10, 15 years ago. But how many of you know the pain of being ignored? All of us know, especially if you've got teenagers, you know what it's like to talk to a child and feel like they're not even listening. You know what it's like to share your heart with someone you love, and there's not a quality response in return. But when we talk to God, all wisdom, all love, all patience, all power. When Jesus told us in John 16, 24, you can ask the Father anything in my name. If you believe, he'll answer you. You know why that is, family? Because when we pray in the name of Jesus, we're legally praying in the place of Jesus. So the Father hears us as if Jesus himself is doing the asking. So right now, I'm just going to pray a brief prayer and ask God to take the next few moments and whatever Satan has planned to attack your mind, your emotions, we're going to set it at ease right now. We're going to speak the peace of God over your life. And I'm going to share with you three voices God never ignores. Wouldn't you like to know what three things, no matter what's happening on the earth, God will never ignore these three voices. It's powerful. It's going to change your life. Today Man, is a very bad day for the devil in your life. Pray with me right now. Father, we take authority over everything that hinders us from standing in your complete will and grace right now. Father, we rebuke every attack over our mind, our emotions, our finances, our family, we submit ourselves to you completely today and embrace everything you did for us at the cross. And we decree today is a turning point day for the partnership family of this incredible ministry. In Jesus' name, it is done. Amen. Write these down right there at your house. Number one, three things, three voices God never ignores. Number one, the voice of the blood. Write that down. 
the voice of the blood. Remember when Cain and Abel were fighting among themselves and Cain killed his brother and he left the scene of the crime and God spoke and said, where is your brother Abel? And, Abel, and Cain says, you know, hey, am I my brother's keeper, Lord? That famous line. You know, when God, Pastor Benny asks a question, it's not because he needs the information. He's wanting us to think about something. So when yeah. Jesus said to the, to the followers, who do men here say that I am? He knew. He was trying to push them to something, to see something. So when God said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? Then he said, the voice of his blood is crying out to me from the ground. The blood has a voice. When you look all through the word of God, blood was shed by a lamb in, in, in the sacrifice of Abel, and God was pleased with it, and the blood saved one man that day. You progress further. Abraham raised a knife over Isaac, and God said, no, stop. There's a sacrifice here in the, in the bushes. Use that instead. And on that day, the shed blood benefited one family. Then in Exodus, when we have the Passover blood, that blood shed saved an entire nation, covered a nation, and God's death angel passed over. Then in Isaiah 53, he prophesied one day the Lamb of God would become a human being. And in John, the Bible said John the Baptist looked up one day and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin, not of one Jesus. man, not of one family, not of one nation. Wonderful He'll take Jesus. away the sin of the world. Wonderful. Acts chapter 10 talks about the death and resurrection of the Lamb. First Peter in the book of Revelation talk about the glory of the Lamb, the city of the Lamb, the kingdom of the Lamb. Why? The blood has a voice. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what divorce you've experienced, the bankruptcy you've had, what you said when you lost your temper, all of the things you're ashamed of, that's what the blood is for. It washes us clean so we can stand pure before God. And when Satan accuses us of our past, the voice of the blood says, shut up. This one's saved. This one's redeemed. Amen, this one's Lord. holy. Amen. Family, no matter what you've gone through, be confident today. There are no skeletons in your closet. Because your closet's been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The blood has a voice God never ignores. That's awesome. Number two, the second thing I want you to write down today, and I'm talking about if you just joined us, the three voices God always listens to. Number two is the voice of His children. Write that down. Mm. Did you know Jesus said you can't even give a cup of cold water to one of His children okay. and not receive a promised reward? You can't even give a cup of cold water without God watching and rewarding. All through the Scripture, the Bible says that God hears the cry of the righteous and He's attentive to their plea. Think of you and I as an as a earthly parent, how you, would, you wouldn't do anything, uh, allow anybody to harm your child. A month ago at 4 a.m., I had to call the police because an intruder was trying to get into my home at 4 a.m. My children were in that house. I immediately grabbed a gun, called the police. Why? Because I'm a father. I will do anything to protect my children. When one of them cries out, I respond. Well, if you and I would respond, think of what our Heavenly Father does, who loved us so much He sent His only begotten Son to die on the cross for our Amen. sins. All through the Scripture, God says, He hears the cry of the righteous. There's something powerful. When you're wounded at your deepest level, when you don't know what to do about the, uh, another major decision that's facing you, when the stress level seems too hard to bear, when the people you love the most don't want anything to do with your life anymore, they're threatening to leave or walk out, and you don't know what tomorrow can look like, you can cry out to God, and He will never, ever ignore you. You can call the governor of your state, but guess what? <laughs> you're not getting through. You can call the White House, you're not getting through. But 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can cry out to Jesus. You can cry out to God. It doesn't matter what you've done. God never consults your past to make decisions about your future. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. The thief next to Jesus, sinning his entire life and hanging next to Jesus for nine solid hours, didn't even ask to be saved. He said, I deserve this. So when I go where I'm going and you go where you're going, just don't forget about me. I accept my punishment. I just don't want to be forgotten. And Jesus said, to be hard to forget a man I'm bringing with me. Today, you're going where I'm going. You'll be with me in paradise. Why? He cried out. God will always respond to the cry of a hungry heart. The other thief next to Jesus for nine hours, Jesus hangs next to him. He sees that he's going to hell. He's, he's two hours away. He's one hour away. He's 30 minutes away. And Jesus is actually dying for the man in front of him. And there's not one recorded word that Jesus ever even spoke to the man, which is fascinating that he saved one and never spoke to the other. Why? 
Because he loved one, hated the other? No. It's because even God can't help a non-reacher. Mm. And one thief never pursued, never asked, never reached. One man sinned his entire life. He's being executed by the Roman government. And he says one right sentence. And God changes his entire eternal destination. You don't have to pray for 12 hours. You don't have to fast for 40 days. Just cry out to God right where you are. Help me, Jesus. Save me, Jesus. Direct me, Jesus. He will never ignore the cry of his child. The third thing that God will never ignore is the voice of a seed. The voice of a seed. This is one of the most powerful principles on the earth. And I feel a real anointing to pray for you in just a few minutes. And I'm going to tell you how to get a gift copy of a book I've written that's going to change your world called How to Prosper in Hard Times God's Way. But before I pray this prayer, you must write down the next few sentences that I direct you to. And I'm going to wrap my prayer around your heart and life because God's about to change your... The seasons of your life are about to radically change. God never ignores the voice of a seed. You know, Pastor Benny, one of the greatest verses in the Old Testament, so overlooked is in Genesis 8, where God said, as long as the earth remains, I'll run the world off of seed, time, and harvest. He said, as long as we're still here, there'll be summer and winter, cold and heat, seed, time, and harvest. No such thing as sowing and reaping. It's sowing, waiting, and reaping. Seed, time, harvest. God told us how to bring anything into our life we needed by taking a portion of what we presently had and trusting Him with it so he could multiply it back to us. Look at the fish and the bread with the little child. Only little little mother sent the boy off to to play for the day. Had no idea we'd be talking about her lunch that she packed 2,000 years later. They brought bread and fish to Jesus, and he fed 15,000 people with it. Why? He's the master multiplier. Mm. He said, if I have faith, just tiny faith. He didn't even address my big faith. Think of God never addressed what you could do with big faith in the Bible. He just said, if you just had faith the size of a mustard seed, You'd be moving mountains. Think about all that God wants to do through you and I if we'll just work with our faith. I'll never forget years ago sitting at a really broken place in my life. I had been called to preach when I was 14 and I was 30. I was just starting to travel internationally as an evangelist and I was fulfilling the dreams and goals I'd had since I was a kid. We were going to Africa and planting churches, and we've started 69 churches in Africa now. And we were just starting back then with our first one or two. And I had a medical problem in my throat. I went to the voice doctor of Ronald Reagan, who was an expert in his field, and he looked at me and said, you may not have a ministry. You may not ever be able to preach again. You may be done. He said, don't speak for three weeks. Don't even say hello to your kids. Don't whisper. Don't, don't talk on the phone. He said, go totally silent for 21 days and come back to see me and we'll see what can be done. And I was devastated. Mm. If I can't talk, I can't preach, I can't witness, I can't worship, I can't share the gospel, I can't pray, I can't even say hello to my kids. Wow. Everything about it was, was devastating to me. And, and so at, I canceled all of my meetings, all of the partner meetings we had. All, we canceled everything. And at that time, we were hit from a thousand different angles and, and money flew out of accounts overnight. And I found myself almost literally broke within a month. I went into a depression I had never experienced before in my life. And I, I said, I've got to hear from God. So I heard a man of God was in a neighboring city preaching a revival. I said, I'll go. I'll just sit and just soak up God's word. Maybe God will talk to me. Mm. As I was sitting in the church, they went to receive an offering and I laughed. I said, I said, oh, that'll be for somebody else, but not me. I had no intention of giving in that offering. I had $1,000 left to my entire life. I had drained every account. Nothing coming in. No hope that I would ever even be able to talk again. I couldn't even say hello to the Lord when I woke up. Didn't know what would happen at the end of that month if I would ever be able to utter another word again. Mm. Sitting in that little place, praying in my mind, God, talk to me tonight. Show me my ministry. My life is not over. He spoke this back to me. I want you to plant a $500 seed in the offering and watch what I do. I died 10,000 deaths. Mm. Anybody that tells you it's always easy to hear from God has been saved 10 seconds or they're lying to you. Exactly. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So our problem is not that we can't hear from God. Wow. It's that our flesh sometimes doesn't want to cooperate with what we know we're hearing. And that was one of those days for me. I knew it was God. 
but I didn't want it to be. God, not now. Let me get back on my feet. Then I'll sow again. Don't, don't ask for half of all I've got left, and what I've got left's not enough. That's when I begin to learn, family, that God never nudges us about a seed unless he's got a harvest on his mind. I had no intention of going into that church and giving that day. And God spoke to me and said, when you let go of something you never intended to give, I will let go of something I never intended to keep. God talked to me that night and said, all I'm asking for you is to trust me. All I'm asking is just to watch what I can do. And so I wrote out that check for $500, put it in the offering plate and plummeted into a depression. I left the building before I, I said, I've got to leave. I won't hear anything else that encourages me tonight. I went home. Three days later, a man I hadn't talked to in five years called me up out of the blue. He said, meet me for lunch. I've got to tell you what's happened to me. I did. Ray said, I broke my shoulder, got laid off from a job. Haven't had a paycheck in six months, but I found an expensive tool in my garage I forgot I had yesterday. Went to a pawn shop and they gave me $1,200. First income I've had from my family in six months. I went to go home to show it to my wife and God came in my car and said, find Mike Smalley and give him everything you just made today. Oh. And he began to cry and push 12 $100 bills across the table. My heart began to rejoice and at the same time I was broken for Ray because I could see the pain in his eyes. I took him by the hand and I prayed a prayer with him. I'm about to pray with you. And I said, Ray, the scripture said God's no respecter of persons. What he'll do for me, he'll do for you. The only reason God nudged you to sow today as he's about to release an incredible harvest. And I told Ray what God had just done for me through my obedience. I took him by the hand. He left my table, went and called his wife, who said, where have you been? I've been wanting to tell you that two hours ago, the disability insurance company we've been fighting for six months just randomly called out of the blue. So they didn't know what they'd been thinking, but they were wrong and we were right. And they wanted to confirm our address because they're overnighting the first of several checks for $5,000. Wow. I was so changed and touched by that. I went to a church on the following Sunday and told them what I just told you. A man came running up to me afterwards and he said, I sold everything I had nine months ago to start a business. It's on the verge of bankruptcy. All I've got left is $500. Do you think God would do it for me since he did it for you? I said, he has to or he's a liar. We joined hands. I prayed mm -hmm. over him. Within three hours, a millionaire from Michigan called him and said, I've heard about the work that you do. I've got big plans. I've got big needs. And she gave him more income in one day than he'd had the previous nine months combined with wow. every order that he had. And today, he has a thriving business. The next Sunday, I went to another church and a woman was sitting in the crowd whose husband had just died. They had a major piece of property that they needed to sell, and she'd had it for sale for months with no buyers, not even a single offer. She approached me and said, I heard about that seed of $500, how God changed your life the day you trusted him with it. Mm -hmm. Do you think God would do it for me? I said, absolutely. I took her by the hand and I prayed. By 8 o'clock that night, a stranger had knocked on her door, said, are you the owner of the property at such and such location? She said, yes. He said, I've been trying to find you for weeks. He said, I've got cash. I'll give you every penny that you're asking for. And within one hour, she had a check signed cashiers, and it was sold. I could tell you story after story after story. This $500 seed was a new beginning, a launching it's just five little $100 bills. It was so big to me at the time, Pastor Benny, because that's about all I had at the moment. But God changed my world. I went back to the doctor one month later. He looked down my throat, scratched his head, and said, I can't find a single thing wrong with you. I can't even find a trace of the problem. And I've been preaching in 40 nations ever since and traveling the world every week of my life because God never ignores the voice of a seed. That's awesome. So awesome. I went to another church. And a little lady was in the audience. She said, I've never been able to afford a home, but I found a rich person here in town that would carry the note for me because they owned a home outright. She said, I was going to put this $500 down on the down payment for the house, but God told me to sow it. She said, pray with me that God will give me favor when I call the man back. She got a lot of favor because when she called the man back, he said, you don't know me, but I'm a Christian. And when I was praying this weekend about whether to accept your offer to buy our house, God told my wife and I he was going to bless us in other ways and just to give it to you as a gift. And in 24 hours, she had a debt-free home from a $500 seed because God is the God of the harvest. Whenever we sow a seed wrapped in faith and call it in, God can't ignore it because anything linked to our faith is linked to his heart. When my seed moves me, it has to move God. Over and over in the Bible, he shows us when people have a crisis moment, God will talk to them 
and give them an instruction that's illogical to their common sense, but never impossible for them to use their faith to obey. And I feel right now that same anointing upon me to pray for you as I did when I prayed for Ray, when I prayed for Clara, when I prayed for Ricky and his wife. I feel that same stirring upon me right now like a financial deliverer to come into a covenant with you right there in front of your television or right there in front of your computer and to believe God to take you to a whole new level. You don't ever have to stay where you are. God never ignores the voice of a seed. When I thrust seed into God's hand, and we're all a walking life of seed. Wisdom is a seed. Our love is a seed. Our patience is a seed. Our offerings are a seed. And when you get busy with your life and stress pulls you to the right and the left, God still looks at what you've trusted Him with. And He's getting in covenant with it to send it back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And while I sit here next to Pastor Benny and I feel this anointing upon me right now, I want to pray for 300 miracles in the lives of 300 people. As you know, Gideon had the army of 300 that changed the face of his nation and the world your nation, my nation, our nations need changing through the power of God. And I want to use my faith right now to come into a covenant with you. And I'm asking God today for 300 miracles in the lives of 300 people who when Pastor Benny and I finish our special prayer, I'm going to ask you to go to the phone and I want you to plant this new beginning seed of $500. I want you to write today's date down in the back of the Bible. I want you to count off 90 days. And I want you to begin to journal the blessings of God over the next 90 days. I want you to wrap expectation around this seed. I'm going wow. to ask God to let the first part of your harvest come within 72 hours. I don't know in what way God will send it. But when you and I lock into a covenant together, he's no respecter of persons. Right. What he did for me and so many others, right. he can do for you right now. Father, in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as Pastor Benny and I pray together for your sheep. Father, your sheep know your voice. They know the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. They know a divine moment that's pregnant with potential. And Lord, you're awaiting our divine yes so you can open the windows of heaven over our life and pour us out a blessing we don't have room enough to receive. Father, I come into a covenant right now for 300 miracles in the lives of 300 people who in just a moment will go to the phone and plant their new beginning seed of $500 into the work of the Lord. I come into a covenant with them for 90 days of hearing your voice. I come into a covenant for 90 days of supernatural joy and a new season of peace in their life. And I ask you, Father, in their lifetime for a 100-fold return because you promised anything we let go of for your sake in the Gospels. We would get it back in this lifetime, 100-fold. Father, as you did it for me and all those I've talked about tonight, I come into a covenant with my friend right now. Quickly show them how fast you can take them to a new level. Father, I don't know if it's money we'd set aside for a rainy day or money we have moving from one account to the next, but I ask you today to anoint this seed of $500. And show us in the next 90 days your favor, your power, and your blessing. In Jesus' name, it is done. And pastors, the people go to the phone. I feel like the moment they begin reaching for the phone, the moment they even begin to reach for it, that's the first moment the Lord will begin to release the first wave of the harvest to their lives. This is I'm powerful. Feeling, and I'm not just saying it. I'm feeling a great anointing here. You've got to obey the word that you just heard as he ministered with such power. Everything in me was stirred. My faith was stirred. God wants to bless you. Go to that right now. Call the, call the number. Call the number on the screen or online. Do it right now. Listen, you've got this book also. Yes. Talk about that, will you please? This book is about 75 pages, and it will tell you how to prosper in hard times God's way. And as you plant this new beginning seed of $500, it'll be uh, Pastor Benny's gift of appreciation to you. It's gone around the world. It will touch your heart. It'll show you how to use the principles of God's Word to take you to a whole new level in your finances and in the peace of your life. I want to pray with you right now that the Lord will also protect you. Can we believe with yes. God's people for protection from financial harm? Yes, absolutely. Because that could come. Who knows what yes. could come in the next few years. Pray Absolutely. with them right now for that, even as they call. Father, you said in Malachi chapter 3 that yes, one Lord. of the benefits for tithing 
and sowing seed was you would become an enemy to our enemy. We pray for your divine protection around our lives and those that we love, and we call in a harvest of divine protection from our seed today, according to Malachi chapter 3, in Jesus' name. Listen, if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't work. And you just shared a powerful story. And it's happened to me many times. Yes. When I faced a serious financial crisis, I knew what to do, but the flesh just doesn't want to do it. Right. The, the flesh says, no, maybe God will do it another way. Or, the highest authority in heaven and earth said, give. Yes. Then he said, it shall be given unto you, good measure. Yeah. Pressed down, and so on. And we know the promises of God are yeah. God cannot lie. Right. A lady came to me. She said, I'm amazed that God gave me the harvest. I said, why are you so amazed? Yeah. I said, God and his word are one. Right. For God to break his promise, it would have to break him. Think about that. Think, Think about, about that. this. Think about that. There's more power in the words, it shall be given unto you, yes. than there is in all the universe. Yes. Those words are more powerful than anything in this life. Yes. Because Jesus said, not one dot. Right. Nothing. Think about that. The word is established forever. Praise Please God. do it now. And I'm telling you, God will do it again and again and again. And I want to pray for the sick right now because I, you stirred that anointing in me. Amen. So as your colleague, Father, Thank in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Heal those in need of healing right now. We rebuke sickness and disease yes. in Jesus' mighty yes, name Jesus. and for your glory. Listen, the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle is salvation. And, and I, yes, I'm asking you to call and sow the seed, but there's people watching that need Jesus right now. Just say, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive my sin, Lord. Come into my heart, Savior. I give you my life. I give you my future. I give you my body as a living sacrifice. Wash me with your blood and make me whole. Live your life in me, a wonderful Redeemer. Amen and amen. Now, you call that number on the screen and let me know that you've been saved too, all right? Or just send me an email. You know, a lot of you are, are sending me emails straight to a, a special email I have just for my partners, pastorbenny at bennyhin.org. And it comes right to my phone and wow. I read it. And often, I'll just pick up the phone and call them. Wow. Yeah, it's really been fun too. I love it because it connects me with, the, you know, right. with God's people. That's wonderful. I want you to prosper. We, yes. That's why we're here. Yes. We want you to be blessed. Right. And there's only one way to be blessed. And that's when we sow seed in God's work. Exactly. Only way. That's it. That's the only promised harvest, but it's the voice he never ignores. Once the seed is in the soil, it becomes a constant intercessor to God on our behalf. That is so powerful. You keep calling and you can do it online too. And I'll see you tomorrow for another powerful program. Love you all. Bye-bye. our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. I am in the studio of Benny Hinn. This is the desk of Benny Hinn. Just a few feet in a minute, I will go to where he sits. But what is so important is, is that something is getting ready to happen to you. Just in these few moments, Pastor Benny Hinn has said to me, Steve, what word has God given you for my partners and for that special person that's watching me at this very moment? The word of the Lord came to me and said that, in a few days, you that are watching, there is a crisis coming, but in the crisis, there is a miracle. Now, remember that. Number two, there is going to be a sudden, listen to this closely, a sudden in a, in a matter of minutes, a miracle of money and finances. Now, there's, that's two things I've talked about. One, there is a crisis coming, but in the crisis, there is going to be a miracle. There is going, and number two, there's going to be a, there's going to be a sudden, I mean a sudden, it, it will happen in minutes, 
that there is that there is a financial miracle. I mean, it, it manifests. These are the two things. And then, there, number three, there is a sickness that is going to be dissolved. The, the sickness is going to be uh, completely, completely gone that has been in your body, has taken up residence. Now, I'm going to get up. I want to tell you because this is a powerful, powerful word I'm about to give you. And I'm going to pray for you. Remember, there's a crisis coming. This is the word, and I'm going to read it. And then there is actual manifestations, manifestations. It's going to happen even while I'm talking and the act of obedience goes in to be a manifested, which I'll tell you in just a moment how that can happen, and that God is about to do something with the sickness, the disease that has taken residence in your body, it's going to come out. All of this is going to happen in the next few moments. How do I know? Well, number one, the Bible said, the word of the Lord came unto him saying, and I'm reading from 1 Kings, the word of the Lord came to who? It came to the man of God. It came to, watch now, watch very closely. I'm on Benny Hinn's set. The man of God and what God is doing uh, with Benny Hinn is a very, very powerful thing. I'm, I'm on his set. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, I am going to arrest the people who are watching today. You're watching the crisis you're about to go into. You're, you're going to go into a crisis, but you don't have to worry because today that will be resolved. And that there is going to be, right as I'm talking, in the act of obedience, if you respond to the obedience part, there is going to be a manifestation of actual finances. I mean, it's going to be there. I mean, it's going to be unbelievable. And that God is going to touch whatever sickness is in your body. It's going to go. Now, you say, how do you know this? I, and, and everything you just touched, sir. Now, my name is Steve Muncie. I'm on Benny Hinn set. The Lord has given me the word through his word, for the Bible said the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, and this is in 2 Kings 17, chapter. And he said, get up, Steve, get up. And I said, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? In this case, he said, go to Zarephath, to a city. There's going to be a woman, and I'm going to... Have her there, and she's going to sustain thee. Now, let me tell you what's happened. I have come, and Benny Hinn has said, come to this ministry. The word of the Lord came upon me and said, arise, go to Benny Hinn's ministry. That's what I'm doing at this moment. And as the word of the Lord came to the man of God, and he said, get up and go to Zarephath, what the man of God did not know is that God was wanting to do a miracle for a woman who would sustain, watch this now, who would sustain the man of God. Now, this is very, very important because, remember, three things are getting ready to happen. Three things are getting ready to happen. That means, and the three things, the, there's a crisis. Just It's either a week or three weeks. I don't know the exact time. That's in front of you. You don't know about it yet. But God's going to do a miracle today with that that's coming. And number two, there's going to be an immediate, on this, on this live telecast, there's going to be an immediate miracle in your money, in your finances. And number three, there's a healing that's going to take place in your body. Now, what the man of God did not know when the word of the Lord came to him and said, I want you to go to this city. There's going to be a woman who's going to sustain thee. Here's what the Lord's. Here's what the Lord said to me. You are like this man of God. You're going to Benny Hinn's ministry. Now, Steve, you are going through the eye of the camera to that special individual. And there are three things that you don't know about them, but I know about them. But they are being called to do something very special. Now, you might say, what am I called to do? Well, listen closely, because the Bible said that God said, I'll prepare a woman. You won't know her name, but I am going to have that woman to sustain the ministry, the man of God. Now, here's what's interesting, is that in this setting, the man of God was dealing with, with drought. It hadn't rained in three years. 
He was the one that asked God, don't let it rain. The king was after him. The whole country economics was shut down. It was in a recession. And he himself was in a position he needed. He needed funding. He needed to eat because now he had gone into the place that God had put him that he was in need. Now he sends him to Zarephath and there's a woman that he says, I'm going to choose this woman and she's going to sustain you. She's going to give to your ministry. The Bible says, the Bible says, then he goes. Now, I have come today and God has spoken in my spirit according to the word of God that I read and said, Steve, they're watching. You are, you're watching. And those three things is upon their life. Now, what the man of God did not know, because you're asking me today, you're saying, you're saying how did you know? I sense I'm going through something. I, 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 I've got to have a financial miracle right now. And I'm going to believe in just a few moments for that with you. I'm sick in my body. What the man of God did not know and what I don't know, but you know, and in this situation, which is like your situation, she had told her son that morning, she said, son, we're going to eat our last meal. We're in a drought. Everybody's dying around us. We're in a financial crisis. Recession's horrible. And son, we're going to eat our last meal. Now, I'm talking to somebody today, you got to have a miracle. You got to have a miracle in your finance. You got to have a miracle in your body. And there's a, there's, a, there's a crisis coming you know nothing about that God wants to correct before it happens. And in this case, the man of God was sent to a woman who was going to eat her last meal. Okay, now I'm talking to you. And the Bible says, the Bible says that when he got to the city, that this woman, he did not know it was going to be this woman, neither did I know you were going to be watching today, but you are the one in which, in which I have been sent because there's a miracle going to happen to you. This is not going to happen to everybody. I'm not going to pray one big prayer. This is just for you. And it's your last. Whatever it is, it's your last. But God, God says, I need you because there is a law of sustainment. And if you obey the law of sustainment, I will take care of your crisis in the future. I will immediately, immediately, I will, I will, financially touch you like you've never been touched and I will heal you of your body. The man of God comes into the city just as I'm coming to television right here at Benny Hinn, this ministry. And the Bible said Elijah is standing there and, uh, and he looks at the woman. He doesn't know, he doesn't know who, who it's going to be who's going to sustain him, who's going to give to his ministry to keep him going. And the Bible says he looks at this woman, she's fetching sticks. She's going to eat her last meal. And he calls her and said, ma'am, could you give me a drink of water? Now, remember, there's a drought. Where's she going to get water? And she says, I can get you some water. Then he says to her, this is, in, this is very incredible because get ready, get ready. God is going to do a powerful miracle in your life financially. There's a crisis ahead of you. And the healing that needs to take place is going to happen today. He says, ma'am, if you're going to give me a drink of water, can you get me something to eat? I, I need to eat because if you knew who I was, I'm a man of God. I have not eaten. And I'm the one that can call the rains. I'm the one that stopped the heavens. If you knew who I was, I need you to sustain this ministry. I I need you to do it because God said he's going to call somebody. And I don't know if you're the one, but man, can you do it? And she said, she said, um, sir, I would do that, but it's my last meal. Now, listen closer to this because I'm talking to somebody at this very moment. And 300 comes to me very, very strongly. 300, $300. He asked her, he said, give me your last meal. Give me your last meal. And she says, she says, 
I, I, if, if I give you my last meal, what is my boy and I? What are we going to do? And he said to her, fear not. Fear not. And I read it to you. He said, your barrel will not, will not go empty. You won't run out of finances. It will be a supernatural financial move in your life if you will sustain. It is called the law of sustainment of ministry. For the Bible says, God said, I will prepare someone to sustain you. At this moment, I have come to this camera and three things are going to happen immediately because God has called you to sustain the ministry. The moment you obey the law of sustainment, which is in the Bible, of saying, I'm giving to the ministry, three things are going to happen. The Bible says, he tells her, do not fear. Now, I feel very strongly about $300, $300 going into this ministry, ministry to sustain it so that Benny Hinn could go around the world to preach the gospel. I feel it strong. I feel, I feel the urgency of the hour. And God, and I, and I would say to God, God, now who, who, who in the world is, who, who am I talking to? He says, I, I don't want you to know their name. I just want you to know, Steve, that they will know who they are because they're in a financial crisis. And there is sickness that has taken residence in their body. And they sense, they're very, they got fear. I'm talking to you, you got fear. That you sense something down the road, whether you're not going to have enough or, or, or something's going to happen or you, you just, you've been having dreams, etc. You just, you, just, you just sense something is not right. And so the man of God says to the woman who we don't know her name, he says, ma'am, Give me your last meal. Give me your last meal. Give me the $300. Give me the seed to be planted to sustain this television ministry to preach the gospel around the world. The woman was uh, afraid. You're, you're probably looking at me and saying, I I'm afraid to do this. I don't know if I can do this or not. And I speak to you today and say, fear not. Because the Bible says, the Bible says, she was prayed over by the man of God to not fear, and she did it. And the Bible said, when she did it, when she gave the man of God her offering, gave him his meal so he could eat, to sustain him, the Bible says, immediately, when she went back to the meal barrel, it was filled. What she did not know is her little boy, who she thought, after she told him, honey, we're going to starve to death after this last meal, what she did know is there was a crisis in her boy. He died a few weeks later. Now, remember I told you about the crisis, but God is going to do the miracle. Remember I told you that God, God, I'm getting up right in, in, into your face to tell you that God wants to transform your finances into a miracle. And God wants to heal you in your body. The moment she gave, she, she was the one that God said, I will prepare the woman. God has prepared you today. God has said, you're the one that will sustain the Benny Hinn ministry. You are the one that's going to send him around the world. You're the one. You're the one that's going to be the one that he's going to keep preaching the gospel and healing the sick. But in turn, God says, I'm going to do a miracle in the next hour with your finances. Let me tell you what you do. I need you to get to a phone. While I'm on, right while I'm on live, you know, your television set right now. I want you to reach over and get the phone. While I'm talking, get your smartphone, get a phone. And what I want you to do is I want you to grab your phone and I want you to hold it. I want you to get ready to call. You can call right now. And I want you to go to that phone because three things are going to happen. While I'm on the air today, the moment you give. And somebody says, you know, 
$300. How do I do that? Well, you could do that on a credit card. You could do it in saying, I will send it just as quick as I can. I'll do a transfer. Ever how you can communicate through a computer, ever how you can communicate through the phone. But it must be done in this moment because of the spirit and the presence of the Lord that God is getting ready to do. And three things are going to happen supernaturally. The moment you do this, the moment that you sustain, as the Bible said, she sustained the ministry of Elijah. God did a miraculous miracle. The same thing he did then, he's going to do today. And the moment you go to the phone and say, you can count me in. I am going to give the offering of $300 to this ministry to preach the gospel around the world. Now, there's some of you that are watching me that are saying, I cannot do that all at once. Here's what you do. You say, you say to the operator, you, you, you get on the phone and you say, this is what I'm going to do right now. And in the next three months, I'm going to give $100, $200, or $100 a month. For some of you, for some of you, it's $150. Some of you, you could give it all at once. But you must give something for, for the release of the power of what happened to this woman. The moment she gave her last meal, the Bible said the meal barrel filled up. Now, you can imagine nobody in town's got any food. They're lining up at her door. They're asking her, where did you get this food? Where did you get it? There's no food in the whole land. And she says, I gave to sustain the ministry. And a miracle of money happened. And I'm telling you, the moment you do this, God's speaking to somebody to give $3,000 to sustain. Your business is going to explode. This is going to change every contract. The lawsuits are going to go away. This is a powerful moment because God is going to do a miracle in your money. The Bible said a few weeks later after she gave, her boy died. Her boy died. This is the crisis I'm talking about. Now, I don't know if it's death. I don't know what it is, but there's a storm. There's a crisis. But the Bible said she went to the prophet. She prayed. And the Bible said the prophet resurrected that boy. He came back to life again. I'm praying the prayer in the next few moments, in the next few moments, that whatever your crisis is, I've only got, I've only got just a few minutes. I've only got a few minutes. But I'm going to pray whatever that crisis is, it will not affect you like it did not affect this woman. And number three, there's a miracle going to happen in your body and you're going to be healed just as this boy was healed. You got to go to the phone right now. Right now, while I'm on, I'm, I'm going to stay here. I've only got about six, uh, five or six minutes, and then I'm going to release that prayer. And there's going to be a 24 hour, there's going to be a 60 minute, there's going to be a transformation of wealth. There's going to be a bank call. There's going to be something happen that is going to be so mysterious. Yeah, I want you to go to your phone right now. $300. $300. You say, here's the first seed. Here's $100. You could give it all at once. It say, but this is my last. But I'm going to tell you what, this is going to be a miracle like you have never witnessed in the history of your life. And when I pray this prayer in the next few moments, there's going to be a release. Somebody's going to come to your door. Somebody's going to call you. You are going to see the tangible manifestation because you are the one that God said, just as I've come to television, just as Elijah went to Zarephath, Steve, you're going to talk to a person you don't know, but they need a miracle. And that special individual is going to sustain the ministry of Benny Hinn. It's going to preach the gospel. You need to go to the phone right now, quickly, quickly. Every person right now, while I'm on the air, I've only got about three or four minutes left with you, and I'm going to release this prayer. Get on the phone. You can dial. You can, you can turn the volume down. And right now, you're watching me on, on the television set because I'm going to release. I'm going to kneel. I'm going to pray. I'm going to release three things. The crisis that's coming to your business, to your life, to your marriage, to your children, it will be broken off of you just as this woman, when she gave her last meal. She didn't know her boy was going to die. She didn't know that a few days later her boy was going to die. She knew in the, when she, the minute that she gave the offering, the meal barrel filled up. The meal barrel filled up. There was an instant, there was an instant offering. 
I want you to go to the phone right now. What you are doing is you are obeying and saying, I am the one that God is calling to sustain this ministry. Many him ministry to go around the world to preach the gospel. Satan has tried to come do everything he possibly can to destroy him. But God is raising him up. There is a power of resurrection and restoration. And you are the one in which God is desperately going to bless. The moment she gave, the Bible says, the meal barrel was filled. This is, this is an unusual, unusual blessing over your life. It is the law of sustainment. It was God that said to him, I will send someone who will sustain you. Steve, when you go on Benny Hinn's broadcast today and they plant that seed and you pray for them, this is going to be an instant. There's going to be today, there's going to be a miracle of finances. Now, pledging won't just do it. It's, it you've got to plant the seed. You've got to put it on the credit card. You have got to do something. The moment the seed gets in the mail, God is going to do an incredible manifestation of a miracle just as he did for the woman in Zarephath. The word of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Only God can do this. And the crisis that is ahead of you will be destroyed, will be blocked by the power of God in your life. And many of you are feeling saying, I feel like there's something out there. It's going to be resolved. And then the sickness that was in that little boy even though he died, he came back to life again. God is getting ready to heal that sickness. So there's three things going to happen. The crisis that you're, that's out there you know nothing about, it's going to be resolved today. Number two, God is going to heal that sickness like he did in that little boy. And num number three, there is a miracle of money. There is a miracle of finances. There is, there is a discovery of, 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 of abundance that you know nothing about. And the moment you obey the law of sustainment, go to your phone right now, $300. Go to, just go to your phone right now. There's a, there's a businessman and a woman watching me, $3,000. It's going to resolve your situation. Go right now as quickly as you, you can because I've only got two minutes and I'm getting ready to pray. The moment you make the transaction, in fact, you may be doing it while I'm praying. Uh, you may say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm doing it, and you're going off the air. See, we're standing right here. I will stand here. I will say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Are you ready? Go to the phone, $300. $300, and there's going to be an immediate manifestation of God's miraculous power. The word of the Lord is just as it was. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when you are called to sustain the man of God, to sustain the ministry, you say, how do I know I'm that one? Well, it's probably you that are needing a miracle in your money, needing a miracle in your body. And some of you are going to go through stuff. You already sense there's a storm coming, but today it will be resolved. That woman gave. Her boy died several weeks later, but he came back to life again. What she didn't know is there was a disease in that boy. He died with a belly full of food. And she thought that they would never eat again, but because of one offering changed her whole life. This offering, you've given offerings, but this offering is about to change your situation. I've got 30 seconds. I'm going to release a prayer, and every one of you that are watching at this moment, you need to get to that phone, to that computer, whatever ever how you can communicate. Get it here to the Benny Hinn ministry. We put it on the altar. There's something getting ready to happen that you, we're going to hear about it all around the world. And you are about to get a miracle. And you and I have met. And I don't even know your name. The Bible says we didn't even know who this woman's name was. God did not give the man of God the name of the person. It's you. It's you. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, three things are getting ready to happen. There is going to be a manifestation of money and finances like you we have never experienced in the next 24 hours, the moment they plan it. Lord, the crisis that is ahead of them, Lord, it is going to be broken. The curse is going to be broken off their life. Lord God, there's no weapon formed against them that's going to prosper. And Lord, you are about to heal their body. 
Go. Move. $300. Do it right now. Whatever you can plant, you, you do right now. This is going to change the history of your life. I've only got a few seconds. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I feel the strength and the power. And just as the Bible said, the word of the Lord came to him saying, Steve, the word of the Lord is this. I've sent you through television so that they might sustain the voice of the gospel. Go to your phone right now. This is a powerful moment. This is probably one of the moments you've given before. You're probably going to keep giving in the future. But this moment is going to change the rest of your life. In the name of Jesus, go to the phone. We're right here. We're right here. And we're waiting for the offering of sustainment. And as you give, God is getting ready to touch your situation right now. Right now. The moment you make the transition, the moment you communicate, the power and the blessings of God is going to come upon you. You better get ready. Your crisis that was coming... It's not going to be. It's going to be resolved. This offering is going to resolve your crisis in the future and your miracle is going to happen in your body. Keep calling. I'm going off the air, but I'm right here. I'm on the other side of that television set. There may be another program come that will follow me and, and there may be something else said, but right now you head right to that computer. You head right to that phone. You say, this is the law of sustainment and I've been called. You're talking to me. I'm ready for the miracle right now. And in the name of Jesus, God is going to do a miracle for you. Go, go. We're right here. We're waiting. And it's going to happen to you in Jesus' name. 